Okay, Biology of Kundalini, Jana Dixon. Here we are in part 12 of the series. We are reading on page 53, lysosomes becoming unglued, okay? Lysosomes, sometimes called suicide bags, are acid-containing vesicles that enable cells to digest unwanted material. These organelles digest the macromolecules from phagocytosis or ingestion. They form the cell's recycling process where old components such as worn out mitochondria are destroyed and replaced by new ones and receptor proteins are recycled. So remember we've been talking about how the mitochondria is participating in dissolving the old self during an awakening. Okay, and digesting the old self, and we're literally getting restructured. So now we're talking about these lysosomes that are like these acid containing bags that um, are part of this recycling process, right? Other functions include digesting foreign bacteria that invade a cell and helping repair damage to the plasma membrane by serving as membrane patches to heal the wound in the cell membrane. Protein processing in the lysosomal system is modulated heat shock proteins called HSP, heat shock proteins. The nervous system with its long-lived long neurons, okay, you have them a long time, is vitally dependent on an effective lysosomal waste disposal system. <coughs> nervous system is very dependent on this system, okay? For unlike other cell types, the neurons cannot divide to, to replace cells that have died through the accumulation of indigestible material, okay? Unlike other cells, neurons cannot replace cells that have died through the accumulation of indigestible material. So lysosomes are responsible for the breakdown of damaged cells and are particularly prominent in nerve cells as an efficient way of dealing with abnormal proteins and recycling proteins. So that's really important in the um, sort of autoimmune response that can happen, especially when you're in like a heightened awakening. And remember your immune system can be suppressed and even go into the state where you have inflammation or allergic reactions. So now you're getting this like undigested proteins in your digestive system. Uh, that means probably your fire in your belly is not high because remember we can have a lot of contraction of the organs so they're not working responsibly so you know they're just in the contraction mode so these lysosomes help to break down the damaged cells um, particularly in the nerve cells because we really need support of the nervous system while this awakening is happening so lysosomes contain about 40 different types of hydrolytic enzymes which are optimally active at a low pH. The membrane surrounding a lysosome prevents these digestive enzymes inside from destroying the cell. The products of me metabolic breakdown are acidic, and this acid breaks the membranes of lysosomes, spilling hydrolytic enzymes into the area to digest the damaged cytoplasm. The release of hydrolytic enzymes from lysosomes may be a primary cause of neuronal damage, that acidic state. So aged neurons have a more difficulty processing proteins and reduced efficiency in the lysosome systems may be a factor in aging. Okay, so the older the neurons are, the more difficulty they are, have in processing these un undigested proteins. Uh, so the lysosome system is, reduced in its efficiency. And many diseases, including Alzheimer's, could be a factor in that, right? Because we're dealing with the neurons. Lysosomal activity is responsible for the accelerated rate of muscle protein breakdown during and after exercise. Lysosomes are also responsible for cell self-digestion during autophagic cell death, a form of programmed self-destruction or autolysis, autolysis as well as the clean cellular recycling that occurs through apoptosis. There might be the occasional catastrophic autolysis occurring during metamorphosis. So she's saying occasionally 
that well self-digestion does happen as like with the caterpillar dissolving to become the butterfly we are also going through this cell breakdown most of that is supposed to happen but she's saying during metamorphosis we might have the occasional catastrophic autolytesis which is the cell digestion so she says as i mentioned before very infrequently there is sweating of blood during peak kundalini as in some saints like jesus saint lugard and blessed christina Besides the release of collagen dissolving enzymes, this unusual bleeding could be brought about when the body's capacity for programmed cell death is overwhelmed and a more necrotic form of cell death takes over, due perhaps to a simultaneous activation of the HPA axis from an acute shock during a normal die-off immune activation. Okay, so you've got that, um, the shock happening the immune system suppressed, the cell wall getting really thin. Um, there's just a lot going on that could contribute to that. The perfect such example was when Jesus bled through his pores in the Garden of Gethsemane before being carted off for crucifixion. Under this psychosocial circumstance, he would have been peaking in metamorphosis and in supreme autonomic shock, according to her. Bleeding from the pores could be explained by acute stress, producing free radical oxidation damage to the lysosomal sacs in his cells. This punctured the lysosomal membranes, releasing enzymes into the cell, whereupon they produce, or they proceed to digest through that cell and neighboring cells, producing more free radicals as they go. This combined with high blood pressure and other normal attributes of high stress, such as an increased heart rate and sweating, it's easy to see how this phenomenon occurs. Both high free radical and high acid conditions would tend to break the membranes of the lysosomes, spilling their catabolic enzymes into the surrounding tissue. Remember, that's that acidic uh, sauce in there. A successfully adapted metamorphosis results in a subtler, more efficient body and a youthful appearance. If increased free radicals means the collagen of the body will invariably be attacked and cross-linked, then why is it that kundalini leads to relaxing the connective fibers in the body? She says the answer may come from cancer research, which she's quoting as increase of free radicals could break down the barriers that hem cancer cells in, in most areas of the body, cells and tissues are held together by collagen, a fibrous material made of protein. The University of California's Bruce Ames theorized that free radicals and ROS could activate latent collagenesis, an enzyme that breaks down collagen. As these enzymes dissolve the collagen glue, local cells and tissues would separate. Cancer cells could escape and move more easily to other areas of the body. So that's Harry Sharma, MD, freedom from disease. Okay, note that in the above quote by Harry Sharma, the body becomes unglued under the influence of increased free radicals and collagen dissolving enzymes. Okay, she says this undoubtedly would make the blood-brain barrier more porous, plus increased diffusion of chemicals between the central nervous system, cerebral spinal fluid, lymph, and the blood. When faced with danger, after the initial fight or flight response of the HPA axis backs off the immune system, um, or backs off, the immune system comes on with a vengeance. So when faced with danger, that initial fight or flight backs off um, and the immune system then comes on with a vengeance. The immune system spews free radicals into the surrounding tissue as well as using them internally in their job as a janitor. The immune system engulfs and digests inferior cells that cannot cope with the increased free radical load. This removal of weak and old makes way for new cells to be constructed at a higher energy level using the building blocks of the old cells. The butterfly is thus born from the gestating pupa or pupae. I don't really know how to say that word. 
<laughs> so if you're bugged by I'm saying it, pu pupae. The release of free radicals and collagenases, the collagen digesting enzyme from macrophages and neutrophils can result in widespread cell damage amounting to pervasive cellular inflammation. Also, while fighting, the macrophage cells release interleukin-1, which travels to the hypothalamus and increases the body's temperature. This mechanism for generating fever disables bacterial response. The increased heat helps to eliminate the body's microbe population to free up the immune system for the work of reconstruction. And I almost said resurrection, which I think is also applicable, reconstruction. Um, Eric Van Winkle, who wrote Toxic Mind Theory um, in her second book, she said or says that there is uh, these lysosome enzymes, they degrade proteins, nucleic acids, mucopolysaccharides, fats, and glycogen but they do not degrade um, catecholamines, serotonin, GABA, and amino acids. And so during the detoxification crisis, these substances flood the synapses. See more on how the body catabolically dissolves and recycles itself in autolysis self-digestion. So that's a different section. There are some suggestions for the blood sweating phenomena in the high pressure symptoms. So that ends that section. Um, we're moving into the last part of, um, well, now we're in kundalini in the diaphragm and throat. So that was one of my early symptoms. The throat was a big deal in kundalini arising, so we're going to talk about that now. Breathing, she says, is key to the successful integration of kundalini, and that during an awakening, sometimes it's hard to breathe. Perhaps, she says, due to a hyper or a hypoactivity in the vagus nerve, especially during heart expansion periods. So you can feel like, like it gets tight because there is this heart expansion. I've definitely experienced that on multiple different awakening levels. Also, histamine release during panic attacks prompts nitric oxide to plump up the air passages, making breathing more laborious, okay? So histamine release can do that too. The breathing difficulty always arose at the same time as the panic states for her, but rather than finding it a source of pathology, I interpreted it as spirit forcing me out of the house to go for long walks. I too thought of it as like, okay, I really need to breathe in deeply into my life right now. She says on one walk, she encountered a form of fish breathing in which she kind of breathed in and out at the same time. As kundalini passes through the diaphragm muscle, one can feel the tension between the former contraction and the relaxation that has begun in the connective tissue of the diaphragm. This change strikes at the core of one's being and every breath during this ordeal is a reminder of choosing love or death, surrender or decay. And truly every breath is that like dying and being reborn again. She said, I felt it as a host of heavy black baths hanging from my diagram, diaphragm for several days. I got through it by walking long distances while deep breathing and chanting, love or death, love or death, love or death. In the initial stages of an awakening, you might find yourself fall into an episode of spontaneous breath of fire. rapid panting breath for a half an hour or so. She says, during the peak, Kundalini moves through the diaphragm, usually um, in a way that's associated with a panic attack, like fast breathing. This is no doubt a period in which the sympathetic nervous system becomes dominant, forcing a faster breathing rate. But the histamine release reduces the free intake of air. So you've got this sympathetic nervous system going and then the histamine response, so you feel like you can't even get the air in. So these breathing panic events may occur during each metamorphic cycle um, of the peak years, and I, I agree with that. Then once substantiation has progressed, this breathing angst disappears and breathing deepens with the relaxation and sensitization of the diaphragmic muscles. Yes, I have a deeper breath now than I've ever had in my life, and that's been systematically deepening over time. This relaxed breathing feeds the higher self or the self with a big S and not the ego, and thus tends to stabilize the evolutionary changes. 
After peak angst cycles, the movement of Kundalini through the diaphragm creates profound joy and a bubbly, tingly laughing effect, usually in association with Kundalini moving through the digestive system and lungs around the months of September through November. So awakenings can be very seasonally triggered, as she keeps mentioning. So noting that um, the, we can also see in Chinese uh, medicine or um, Eastern medicine that our digestive and detoxification process in the body, different body organs are active at different times of the year that Kundalini also syncs up with seasonal uh, metamorphosis as well. So. Activity can be modulated in the brain hemispheres by breathing through the opposite nostril. So if you want to increase left brain function, close the right nostril, breathe through that left, or to increase right brain function, close the left nostril. Okay, specifically for the lungs, you could try alpha lipoic acid, L-carnitine, essential fatty acids, and acetylcysteine. Uh, use the leaves, flowers, and seeds of borage, and you'll find it to be a godsend for normalizing and calming. Make teas of borage, chamomile, elderflower, lemon balm, marshmallow, mullein, and peppermint. Eat bioflavonoid-rich foods like spinach, berries, think maximum color. So you're activating all your chakras, so you want all the colors. Um, or richness and colors. And also she's listing things that are calming the nervous system and supporting the immune system like elderflowers, chamomile is calming, marshmallow is soothing, lemon balm, mullein is for the lungs. So these are all like normalizing and calming. I would also, also suggest adaptogenic herbs like maca, like ginseng, like ashwagandha. And ashwagandha can be heating so I would use that with ghee to tone that down or clarify it better. The next part says loosening the grip. If there's tightness in the chest, you might try to put a heavy weight or a hot water bottle on your diaphragm and then breathe into it to try to shift the chemistry, okay? So that it's actually heavier down there instead of on your lungs. Also the primal release pose in the Kundalini skills section relaxes both the psoas and the diaphragm at the same time. So we're not to that part yet, but the primal release pose, she gives some different poses later. This might be just what you need. It is truly remarkable as is CMR, um, the cardiomuscular release. So the primal release pose and the cardiomuscular release technique will help take contraction out of the diaphragm and rewire the vagus nerve medulla area. To get that spontaneous Ah, breath and the inner arts of the pot of gold and opening the mouth of God. So she's also speaking of poses and postures now. Help to reset the nervous system. It can take a full half hour of applied relaxation before you get a deep spontaneous. Ah, and I also suggest the Kundalini Yoga, the Ecstatic Yoga, Universal Kundalini Yoga that I teach. And I have a free class on my YouTube channel, uh, on this channel. If you just scroll down to the playlist of Kundalini Yoga, then you'll find a five-part class. I get you into that mm and ah and oh stuff. Besides these, any emotional release work would help, both cathartic and quiet, plus breathing techniques such as holotropic breathing. Also, you could try what I call flying, which is to lie on your back on a bolster about eight inches thick. Put under the back of your chest, put your arms out and relax your breathing into the pose. So you've got something to open your chest up, like a block even behind your back. A consistent practice of singing, toning, chanting, mantra, humming, growling will loosen the diaphragm. You can feel that energy in your diaphragm. And it will also detoxify the central nervous system to use these sounds. If you do these near a river or waterfall, this greatly amplifies the effect. And if you are having persistent trouble breathing, you might consider buying a negative ion generator for your home. Running and other aerobic exercise will give you more lung volume and give the diaphragm mechanism more energy to relax itself. But the most natural solution for her was long breathing walks in nature. 
preferably around flowing water. Also keeping adequately hydrated will relax the diaphragm because the diaphragm is not trying to conserve a loss of water from the lungs, which is one of its jobs. If you still have trouble breathing, you might have hyperhistamine levels. So check out antihistamine measures. Um, she has a histamine section. And also try to get on a non-allergenic diet so your body's not producing extra histamine to uh, counter any allergic reactions. She says our vegetative and social faculties are tied together through the old and new vagus nerve. So retraining the vagus needs to incorporate a form of social therapy. And what is social therapy if not loving relationship? Healthy relationship or intimacy with others retrains the vagus. This is some sort of social relationship training that helps us form loving bonds with others. Um, She's saying, thus, some sort of social or relationship training that helps us form loving bonds with others will reform our social wiring and permanently relax our breathing mechanisms. So we tend to get stressed over our relationships more than anything. So learning how to relate in a healthy manner is also fundamental to good health and longevity. Healing is growth beyond patterns of disease. And then now we'll end with this section, Kundalini through the throat. But before I do, really think about that last paragraph that our, most of our stress comes through our relationships and that actually those are meant to be the source of healing. And when we have healing and love and connectivity in our relationships, then our vagus nerve relaxes, which is the main nerve that our kundalini energy affects. So then we have a more open body system to receive the cosmic energy. So how important it is to find ourselves healing in relationship, loving, connecting, and that it's actually vital for our awakening. Kundalini opening the throat can be mighty uncomfortable. I, I think I told you early on, it felt like I was swallowing the entire inside of my throat when it happened to me. It was very strange. The inner arts and skills in this book will help. So again, this is later on in the book. You can lessen the choking in the narrows by doing CMR neuroemotional repro reprogramming on your solar plexus with plenty of breathing into your belly. Um, again, she's referencing stuff from later. Focus on making a jumper cable between your third eye and your heart. You can do this with your hands during a CMR type session. So you're connecting these two things. She's just giving later references right now. Opening the mouth of God and the pot of gold. Okay, you won't know what that is till later. Also tapping your thymus rhythmically through the day. So this is good. Um, and doing heart to throat jumper cable with your hands. So heart to throat, you're just doing this kind of thing. Um, plenty of stretching, singing, toning, group encounters um, or confessional groups like a 12 step program where everyone gets to voice. Um, that helps a lot. And as your throat starts to open, there's a physiological need to de-repress one's vocal faculties and learn to speak greater truths. So that's finding your true voice. So any kind of physical exertion will help. Um, ginger root, tea with honey, you can gargle it or just drinking that helps soothe contractions. Um, she says, I needn't say that toning, singing, mantra, growling, and any sound techniques are essential for releasing the throat. Like it is really like about um, like opening up, especially if you still feel like a choking or constriction there. She continues, as the solar heart first starts its circuitry connections, you can get pain in the thyroid throat area for several years. Um, breathing is key to handling and facilitating this. Um, the CMR is one hand on the right side of the heart and one on the throat. Um, working on the solar plexus while doing this throat work uh, and continuous breathing. A type of regenerating breath that's good for 
energy integration during panic attacks is fish breathing. So that's where you have your mouth open and you're both breathing in and out at the same time. You just kind of feel that air moving around and around. Um, and then also breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth is another good one. And she just lists um, other things that are helpful and other books. She lists um, practices in Alan Saltzman's books, The Healing Way and The Belly and Its Power, as well as Montak Chia, which I love Montak Chia, really good um, sacred sexuality book. She recommends Chine Song, Internal Organ Chi Massage. Um, and then also the book Breath Walk, Breathing Your Way to a Revitalized Body, Mind, and Spirit by Guru Charan Singh Khalsa. Sounds like an Indian name. So that ends this section. Tomorrow we're going to talk about heart expansions, which I love. And then we'll get into a tolerance for bliss after that. We are building up, just starting to understand, right, more of the things that are going on and realize that this process of awakening is very biological. And depending on how well we are nourished at a cellular level, how well we are taking care of our body and listening to the symptoms, and the preparatory practices that we are doing to strengthen our nervous system, our body, mind, they're all going to determine how well we handle the inner conjunction, the um, meeting of God within us, which is a very powerful process that we all will experience in this lifetime at some phase because of the process that we're in on planet Earth, which is an Earth ascension. And the events that are surrounding you right now in your life, the world events, the local events and the events in your family are part of the facilitation of your own awakening process. So don't forget that the stress, remember, is part of the catalyst for the awakening. The stress is creating the sacred container. It's pressing us to pop, to have the opening. So really take note of that and that's why I know this is a global event because the stress is global right now. We're being pressurized in so many ways that the only response from consciousness eventually for everyone is to pop, is to go through this awakening. And so let's prepare ourselves to help each other, to help ourselves, to know what's going on and not need to run to a system that doesn't actually know what to do with this. So thank you for joining me for reading Biology of Kundalini by Janet Dixon, Exploring the Fire of Life. Remember, you can find it online at lulu.com. I've got more information about the process on this YouTube channel if you look through some of my other playlists, including uh, yoga and meditation. If you haven't noticed there, I also work with Yoga Nidra and Emotion Code to help the subconscious mind unload and acupressure points because I believe that where we have stagnation in the body chi, that's going to disrupt this life force from flowing fluidly. So I love to use that method. So there's some videos to help you there. Join me again tomorrow as we get deeper into this book and deeper into this wisdom. See you next time.